Principio Erat Verbum. In the beginning was the Word. There was a man of venerable life and blessed memory, the father and founder of monasteries, who was given the same name as the prophet Yonah. For what is pronounced Iona in Hebrew and is called Columba in Latin means one and the same thing, a dove. In the last years of the world, a son will come whose name Columba will be famous throughout all these ocean islands of Ireland, Scotland and the Western world. So great a name could not have been given to the man of God but by divine providence. For it is shown in the Gospels that the Holy Spirit descended upon the only begotten Son of the Everlasting Father in the form of that little bird. By God's gift from the days of his infancy, our abbot was enriched with the appropriate name of Columba. St. Columba was born in Donegal around 520 into a culture of the written word. Romantic writers have for too long portrayed an ancient Ireland of storytelling bards at a time when the traditional scholars themselves wrote and read books. To the early Irish church, the written word was the word of God. From the hand of God came scripture. God was the author of a book. And that book was scripture. And the best art and craft of hand and mind was used to write and explain scripture. For the Irish, writing and the miraculous lay very close together. And some were miracles in themselves. What Geraldus Cambrensis wrote about a gospel book in the 12th century describes very well the greatest gospel book that has survived, the Book of Kells. Here you can look upon the face of the divine majesty drawn in a miraculous way. If you take the trouble to look very closely and penetrate with your eyes to the secrets of the artistry, you will notice such intricacies, so delicate and subtle, so close together and well knitted, so involved and bound together, and so fresh still in their colorings, that you will not hesitate to declare that all these things must have been the result of the work not of men, but of angels. There are many miracles reported in the lives of the saints about saints and books and writing. The boy who lost the books of St. Columba in the Boyne and all were destroyed except one page written in Columba's own hand. A story is told of St. Kieran of Clonmacnoise that he used the antlers of a wild stag as a book stand and when the stag went off thoughtlessly with St. Kieran's book it was quickly and miraculously recovered. And then there's the miracle of St. Makua who when he read his Psalter a fly walked along the line as a living bookmark and when the saint stopped singing, the fly stopped. And when the saint resumed his psalter again, the fly moved on. 
et supini seus perabis. The Book of Kells has remained enigmatic for a very long time. The book has now become one of Ireland's greatest attractions and is viewed by over half a million visitors to the Library of Trinity College Dublin every year. A good chance to have a look around the exhibition and the Book of Kells itself. Are there any questions you want to ask me about the background of how it was made or where it came from? How old is the Book of Kells? Well, we first know it existed sometime in the 12th century. The book was found in Kells, that's why it's got its name, uh, which is about 40 miles away from Dublin. How many people did it take to write it? The whole monastery would have been involved in making, in some way or another, the book. And there have been several hundred people who worked in the monastery. The Book of Kells is the work of very fine artists, of consummate painters, of extremely fine calligraphers. But it is not the work of angels, it is the work of men. And the humanity and humour of these artists shows true in the book. Well, if we accept that the Book of Kells is the most uh, celebrated Irish medieval manuscript there is, and probably the most famous manuscript to survive uh, from anywhere in the Middle Ages, we have to really ask why that is. Given that the text as a copy of the Gospels is not in itself at all unique, uh, the answer lies very definitely in, in the decoration of the Book of Kells, in the scale of it and in the intensity of it. The decoration is on a level which has frequently defied verbal description. The Book of Kells actually contains a fourfold gospel made up of the individual gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And in the early church, Christian commentators were concerned to defend this arrangement when speaking with heretics or with pagans to show that the four gospels, although very different from each other in many ways, were reflecting the same truth. They were, they explained, like the four rivers of paradise flowing out from a single fountain to water the four corners of the earth. It seems to me that it could be the production of a, a sort of research team who've gone all over Europe, inquired into the latest trends, understood what a, what a great book could be like, and have joined in with the ideas of many other people how to develop the ornaments in a great gospel book. Kells may have been produced at the perimeters of the known world, but what it's doing is central to European culture. In the prefatory pages of the Book of Kells, there are a series of arcades, very lavishly decorated, and they are setting out the canon tables. This is a series of concordances. There are lists here of numbers which should correspond with numbers in the margins of the Gospel text, so that a reader would be able to see what all four Gospels have in common, or what any three of them have in common, any two of them, and what is unique to each. And these are displayed in traditional manner under architectural arches in a long sequence. We are walking, as it were, through a series of arcades towards the sacred text of the fourfold gospel. One of the great images used by the early Christian commentators was that of the four beasts, which they came to associate with the four evangelists. So they took together two visions, one from the Old and one from the New Testament. From the Old Testament, they pondered the extraordinary mystical vision of the prophet Ezekiel, who had a great revelation of the majesty and divinity of God. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire unfolding itself. And a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the colour of amber, out of...